Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. Today, we're going to be going over SOAR inside of Reaper. It's a MIDI editor, kind of like the channel rack inside of FL Studio. It gives you that kind of feel and vibe. It was created by Nesbro. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I apologize if I'm butchering it, but let me show you how to download it, how to get it working, and all the steps you need. Let's go. All right, so you can actually get it from the Reaper stash. Um, and once you get here, you can just go to the search and just type in SOAR, hit search, and it'll bring one up for Mac and it'll bring one up for Windows. I do have the links below in the description so that you can just download it. It'll take you straight to this page to download it from the Reaper stash site. All right, and once you've installed it, then you just go up here to your extensions and you'll see SOAR up here as an extension for Reaper. All right. And this is what it will pop up. You'll have this little SOAR screen. Um, it gives you an option for like this multi option here. So if you click on this down arrow, it gives you an option that you can dock it if you wanna dock the SOAR as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start on the settings and I'm gonna go through all the steps and show you how to use it. All right, so for the demonstration, I'm gonna be using Satilla. Satilla is a drum machine that was created by Decomposer. You can download it for free. I should have a link below in the description of this video so you can download it. If you want to see a video of how to actually use Satilla, let me know in the comment section below. All right, so we're going to go down to SOAR and we're going to go to the settings. Uh, you can mess with your max grid resolution if you want to. You can go up to 128. Um, your default will start on C4. I have it set on auto delete MIDI item. After the last note is deleted, I'll show you what that means. Make sure all these are checked so you can cut and paste, uh, insert and delete, and set your note properties. Preview the sound. When you click on it, it will have a channel where you can actually click on it to hear the sound, or you can use the grid to hear the sound. To animate the playback means that it'll actually go across the line and you'll be able to see the playing back of your sounds. And show tool tips means that basically if you hover over any of the top things, it should be a tip to let you know. The skins, I would highly suggest to go to FL. It looks the best to me. Um, you can do other ones. Just click on it and then apply and it'll actually apply it to SOAR itself. So let's start with this auto delete MIDI item. I'm gonna start with that. All right, so see now we have Satilla already selected up here. I can go to this MIDI, I can right click on it or I can just do the drop down. click on the drop down. I'm gonna go to add channel. This will allow me to easily choose which sound I want to use, All right? So I'm going to go to Satilla and I'm going to leave it on MIDI channel one and I'm going to click on this pitch right here. And Satilla gives you the option to see what your name of your track is. So that's what makes it really easy to use. And that's why I use it for this demonstration. So I'm just going to go on a kick and I'm going to hit OK. So now it brings up this little step sequencer set up here. Uh, if you hit this drop down, You'll have an option to do it in triplets. You also have it to do by the number of bars. So you can do two bars and you can also do four bars. This will make it a lot easier and kind of looks like FL when you do it that way. So I'm just gonna place one kick on here. And as you see, it made a MIDI item. So it automatically makes a MIDI item once you put something in here, All right? And I have it set to where if I remove the MIDI items, that this, will dis this MIDI item will disappear. So if I take away this kick, the MIDI item completely disappears. And that was in the settings and that's this auto delete MIDI. So if I uncheck it, hit okay. And I go in here and I click on here, you see it made the MIDI channel, but if I take it away, the MIDI channel actually stays there now, right? So that's what that does. Cut and paste is kind of self-explanatory. So this channel label to make sounds and this grid cells to make sounds, that's actually clicking inside of the grid and the channel label. So I'm gonna take away, let's do the grid, right? So I'm gonna hit okay. So now if I click in the grid, it doesn't make a kick sound. But here, if I click on here, this is the channel, this makes a sound. So if I wanted to turn that off, I can just click on here. And now there's no sound here and there's no sound inside of the grid. All right. 
So you can keep these checked if you want to. It's just, you know, a preference thing. The animated playback is it actually playing along with the track. So if I hit play, you see the little line going across in there. So that's what the animated playback does. But I'm going to turn off this part where the you put in the sounds. All right. So that was pretty much the settings. All right. So this here is your open MIDI processor. So if I click on here, uh, this gives me the option to quantize notes. Um, you can add a swing to your notes as well. You can do the length of them, velocity, quantizing strength. So if you want it to be a little off the grid when it's quantizing, you can set that here. This randomize gives you an option to change the start time, length, and velocity. So you can change your velocity randomly uh, or the length of the notes randomly, or even the start time randomly. So if you wanted to give it that human feel, you can do that right here inside of this uh, MIDI processor. And here's the strength of that randomizing. It gives you an option to like remove certain ones at certain beats. So if you already had your drum set up inside a Reaper, you can hit this process measure, select it in the arrange, and you this will apply to whatever you selected inside of your MIDI. All right, let's move along. So this gives you an option to see your velocities. If you right click over here, it gives you offset. So you can offset your notes just like you can in FL's channel rack. You can do the same thing here and it gives you an option for length as well. So you can change the length of the note itself. So right now it's set on 116. So you could change those to make them smaller or bigger. Um, you can offset it going uh, up or down, which is really cool. I think that's a really nice feature. All right. So this thing right here, I have no idea what this does. Just to be honest with you guys, I, if you know what this thing does, please leave it below in the comment section. Uh, I would love to know what this does. I, have, I haven't yet to find out what it is and what it does. So this is your grid resolution. So you can change your grid. You can do 16s, you can do uh, 32, you can do 64. And I set it to where uh, it'll only go up to 164. So that's why the grid is limited there. I can do the 128 if I wanted to, but I think that's just uh, a little bit too much. All right, so I'm gonna set it back to eight. This is your loop. So if I wanted to loop the whole thing, I can click on this and now it'll set my loop points and turn on my looper for Reaper. And you can sync your bars. So if you had a different bar here, these are your bars. So you can do one bar or you can go to the next bar, but you'll see it move over the whole section up here. Uh, so the sections are really cool. I think it's really uh, easy to kind of use and set up. And this will actually link them or sync the bars together. All right, so now we're gonna go to this multi area here. So I'm gonna click on this drop down, and it has an option that says switch to single channel mode. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna set which one I want it to be on. So I'm gonna set the channel, I'm gonna set it to Satilla, and I'm gonna hit OK. So now I'm actually gonna dock this so it'll be a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. So now it kind of looks like the step sequencer for FL Studio. And as you see, it has the names of the stuff on here and you can see my kicks here already so i can remove these kicks so when you're doing a single mode it makes it really easy to kind of stretch out and see everything that's on the keyboard if you have something like satilla what gives you the name of the actual sounds that you're using that helps out tremendously but uh, let's change some stuff up i'm going to change this kit i'm going to use uh, my kit on here and once i click in here you see all the names change to whatever i have set up in here so let's say I want to do like a two-step. Usually I'll have it on 16s. So 16s will look like this, and then you'll have your hi-hat here, right? And you'll do this one, two. Uh, this is one of the things that I don't necessarily like about Sower is that it doesn't have an option to where you can just add two steps in here. If you do know a way to do this, definitely leave it below in the comment section. All right. So, uh, you know, this is kind of tedious to do this. So what I usually do, is I set this to eight and then I'll just go to the hi-hat and just go all the way across. So now I have a two-step and if I had set this back to 16, I'll be able to see that it's set as a two-step, which is pretty cool. And I can set this back to eight again and let's add a kick and a snare in here. So, bah. so. Add your kick.
All right, and just that simple, just made a really quick drum pattern inside of Reaper. So now let's say I wanted to add this open hat and I wanted to, to kind of record it in. I'm just gonna record this track. So now I can just play it from here. So this gives you a real nice versatile way of actually making stuff. So if you didn't want to just type stuff in the grid, if you wanted to click it in, you can click it in as well. And if you wanted to add like, you know, some rolls in here, uh, let's add one here. Let's add one here. All right, you can just add some rolls randomly inside of the track. which is really dope. So let's say I wanted to uh, randomize these hi-hats. Seeing that this one is selected, I can go into this open MIDI processor, right? And I can do a velocity randomize on here, right? And it said apply, and it's gonna randomize those hi-hats as you see down here. All right, so that was a real quick way to actually set up some drums for Satilla. So if you had, if you wanted to use like the resample matic you can do that. If you wanted to make a drum kit, you would have it laid out just like this for the resample matic If you wanted to do separately resample matics or even like a complete control, you can do that as well. Let me show you that real quick. All right, so I have a template here of uh, some drums. So I'm gonna highlight all of the drums itself. I'm gonna go back in here and right click and I wanna switch it to multi-channel mode, right? So what I wanna do is add selected tracks. So this is gonna put all those tracks, those individual tracks into Sower. So as you see now, I have my kick, snare. All right, so what makes this pretty cool is, um, you can do pretty much the same as you did with the other setup. So let's say I wanted to do my kicks, right? It's gonna kind of follow the same kick pattern that is on here already. Right, and then I want to add my snare. All right, so we have the kick and the snare. So let's say for the hi-hat, right? You wanted to do something different for the hi-hat itself. So what I can actually do is right click on here, and I can open in single channel mode. So what this allow me to do is do whatever I wanna do with my hi-hats and it'll just play with the track. So if I click on this, now I'm in my hi-hats and I can change my, uh, where my hi-hats start. So if I wanted to do like the two-step kind of thing, So if I wanted to do something like this, just random hi-hats. So you have that option inside of Sword to actually just do just that one channel that way and you can go back into uh, the multi-channel mode. And seeing that I already have some on this channel, the C4, it's gonna show that C4 on there as well. So if I wanted to just do, let's say I wanted to do just the open hat, right? I can go here, highlight this one, because I have my, my tracks already armed. So this one will arm just this track, and I'll be able to record just this in. Right, so now I have the open hat in there as well. 
which is really cool. Um, so let's say I wanted to copy all of these over to another track. Uh, the only thing that won't copy over would be the, the weird hi-hat section that I have because it's in its own little channel. So let's say I highlight these, right? I'm holding on shift to highlight them. And what I want to do is go up here and it gives you the option that says copy, or you can just use control C if you want to do that. Now I'm going to go to this second section, this section here to move it over and it'll move everything over to this section as you see at the top. And I can just do a control in the V and paste that other section down here as well. So now if I wanted to hear the whole thing, I can stretch out this loop. And um, for the second part, let's take away some stuff. Let's take away, let's take away the hats completely. So let's take away all these hats. All right. So there's no hats in the second part, right? So no hats is playing in the second part. All right, so that makes it so much easier to add and change your, your different sections if you want to do that inside of Sower as well. So this is kind of like how FL Channel Rack works where you can just kind of make different sections. And this also works for other drum programs. So if you're using like the SI drum kits, if you're using the MT drum kits, all of these drum kits actually work in SOAR as well. So whatever drum program you have, you should be able to put it in here and use it uh, to its full extent. So, uh, so let's say I wanted to remove one of these. I can just right click on it and it'll give me an option that says remove. So I can remove it out of SOAR as well. So now I'm just gonna make a quick beat and um, yeah, let's see what we got. All right, so I added a sample in here from Cymatics. I added like a Flux Mini to the sample to give it a little vibrato kind of sound. Added some reverb, some delay on there. And this is what I got. So that was Sower inside of Reaper. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you have like any kind of questions, comments, leave them below in the comment section. And yeah, pretty much that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for watching. Learning Reaper. Peace. Hey you, yes you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not gonna keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video though. Peace.